I like glasses, but I hate glasses. I hate them because they're fuzzy. And when they're fuzzy, they're a pain in my ass. There are times where you may be forced to grow up, to do away with like the baggy pants. And instead, get your pair, you know, yourself a nice pair of Levi's. <laughs> there are gonna be times where you need to learn how to tie a tie because that's just what you'll learn when you get into like a business management degree in college because that's important, okay? And whether we want to admit it or not, we all have a tendency to need and or want to grow up a bit. And sure, we'll sneak out every once in a while to rewatch like Naruto Shippuden, but now your significant other wants to watch Outer Banks instead because apparently it's a super good show. Even though the one girl, all she just says is John B. 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 I don't know anybody that says somebody's middle initial. I'm Alex. Alex said a fine Instagram. And while this identity crisis is common enough in people when they're growing up, it's not so very common in car manufacturers. So just what exactly happened to the disappearance, the body? Aha Blast Freezy of Taco Bell. Just what exactly happened to Mazda's Mazda Speed Division? Doesn't change though our wheels, tires, and suspension. Fitmanindustries.com plug that will always be there. Okay, if I am promoting Squarespace ad in that section and not wheels, tires, and suspension, just know that we're doing very badly and we're likely on the out. And of course, drop a comment below on what you'd like us to talk about in the new series of what the f happened, except without the swear word because of monetization issues with YouTube. I read every single comment and it gives us some fun to run off of. I also apologize for my hair being floofy as hell. All right. I need to get it cut. Mazda is a beautiful little company. They've been known for like the dawn of time for creating affordable, fun, spritzy sports cars that people just fell in love with, mostly because of their driving experience. And sure, the modification of these cars will almost always end up with them turning into like mean, green, fighting machines with headlight covers, sleepy eye mods, blow off valves that sound like grenades. And Mazda themselves almost, you know, even though that's really cool that you do that, they pretty much always develop them with like flow, simplicity, a sense of calmness that truly embodied their brand. It was like, namaste. And then they introduced their Mazda racing division, Mazda Speed, inherently Mazda's racing arm that had been around since like 1967. But they were initially actually known as just Mazda Sports Corner, which was ran by Takayoshi Ohashi. Got that one right. Who also ran Mazda's Tokyo Distributor. They'd be involved in quite a bit of racing in the 80s with the likes of the Mazda 717, the 727, and the 737. And in 1983, the team was officially brought in house to Mazda in Hiroshima, where the name was inherently changed from that old one to Mazda Speed. And over the decades, Mazda Speed became a absolute force to be reckoned with, taking wins using the unusual Wankel rotary engine and insane body types that hyper-focused on limited drags. And I mean, Mazda Speed inherently made the FIA change its regulations because of just what it was capable of doing with that little Wankel rotary engine. And this was in 1991, right after Mazda Speed won the 1991 Le Mans. That was the first for a Japanese team, by the way and it wouldn't happen again until the late 2010s. Mazda was then slapping babies and shaking coffee in the racing world and they were doing a hell of a good job. But even with the regulation shifts, they knew that there was probably some death coming along the way. The nameplate of Mazda Speed would ultimately enter into the normal world that you and I know. The consumer model world, the best world that we can be in. Where we wish we got cool things, but really we just got cup holders and power windows because that was just something that we wanted out of cars back in the early 1990s. After the FIA regulation change that ripped the wankle out, Mazda took their sign to step out a bit and instead focus on their business side of things. And with Mazda assuming control of Mazda Speed in 1998, it looked like the platform of cars that people like you and people like me would come to love because Mazda was talking about introducing some fun little spritzy, sportsy consumer cars that would really jump the gun. It started with the 2003 Mazda Speed Protégé and it only came in the NA market and had 30 more horsepower than its base counterpart, a better turbo, an intercooler, new spoiler, an air dam, and some high compression that made it a fun sedan and ultimately came in the best colors known to man. The best colors. Mazda had the best finishes. And I had a friend, Michael, he had one of these, owned it for like eight years, still does. And the paint is still one of the coolest oranges I've ever seen on a production car. They call it spicy orange. Look at it. 
Now look at me. Now look back at it. Look at the spicy orange and tell me that you don't love that color. And Mazda Speed didn't stop because enthusiasts absolutely loved Mazda for doing this without hiking up the price so much so that these cars were unobtainable. And they came to the North American market that wasn't down to it or a glorified base model. It actually had some meat behind it. Mazda was doing what people knew Mazda for. They were creating affordable sports cars that were fun. And it happened again. It came out in 2004 with the Mazda Speed MX-5, which by the way is the most popular track car in the USA. Mazda Mia, yeah, you're welcome. Take that to who wants to be a millionaire. An official turbocharged straight four engine with almost 180 horsepower and could reach 60 miles per hour in 6.7 seconds. It had upgraded shock absorbers, wider tires. It had all the goods. And if you have a lava orange Mazda Speed Miata, call me. The Mazda Speed 6 would follow a 270 horsepower all-wheel drive, six-speed manual, 2.3 liter, inline four, turbocharging goodness that could walk the floor of plenty of cars during its time. Then you had the Mazda Speed 3, which from 2007 to 2013, which also had that 2.3 liter, but it was front-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive. You still get the limited slip differential and six-speed to go beat around some Hondas are running around at the time, but for the most part, that was the car that a lot of people jumped into, either the Mazda Speed 3 or the Mazda Speed 6. And things seem to be going pretty pretty well, but with every Mazda Speed being made, it was like a parent that was slowly getting tired of the Lego set being left out by their child. One Lego a day from about 1991 to 2014, and Mazda was kind of sort of getting tired of it. Like, actually pretty tired of it. And now, when you look at the Mazda dealerships, you don't really see a bit of anything with the Mazda Speed badge. It's actually completely gone, and it's been replaced with a bunch of crossovers that have sky active technology all over them and angry headlights because that's what the VIP kids like these days, but they still want a hot hatch at 40 miles per gallon. So what happened? What actually happened to Mazda Speeds? One of the best trims to come out of a car manufacturer. Why did Mazda cut it down? Why is Mazda getting rid of all of their fun sh well, in short, it has many to do with our opinions on the subject, but mostly theirs. It's because they don't think it matches their new style. Remember your friend that stopped hanging out with you because they found new friends and it hurt a lot and it was painful and you learned that that happens? That pain is the pain of Mazda speed to Mazda. And Mazda just pretty much outright said that. Leading up and into the early 2018s and even into the late 2020s, Mazda officially stated multiple times during Q&A sessions during the release of new models that a Mazda speed edition would likely just never be coming, stating that Mazda is focused on becoming more mature and upscale. It is our priority to continue to the next generation of sky active technologies, which I think is just complete and utter bullshit. As part of this evolution, we are refining. I just think it's really dumb. And applying our turbocharged engines to provide. Apply this to a Mazda Speed! Jesus! A better, stronger performance with engaging driving behaviors. Oh my god, what? This died just horse thing here. All right, but it's not a surprise. Mazda has a small team and opted to shift away from the hot boy racer because apparently we're not that dependable and they'd rather focus on a higher end market instead. And for those that remember 2016, Mazda's president at the time, Masahiro Moro, called the early Mazda seed models a childish execution. He said that. Childish execution. He blamed Mazda Speed for Mazda's slowish start into the more sophisticated brand. If there was an angry emoji I could ship to him, I would. But he said that and he meant every word. But if you take out the opinion of the situation, there is some genuine truth and maybe some happiness in their delay of the Mazda Speed brand, the one that you and I came to know and love. Really, they just don't have the people. Mazda's hyper focus on Skya technology isn't because that's what they want to do. It's pretty much because it's all they can do anymore. And instead of bringing back some half ash washed up crossover junk holding the Mazda Speed nameplate that everybody's gonna tout and scream and yell at and complain about, kind of like the Mitsubishi Eclipse, Mazda's team is placing it on a hiatus until they believe they can have a focused attempt at bringing that nameplate back, something that can actually take on the likes of the Civic, the WRX, and more. There's no doubt with the Mark being on a hiatus that it will come back. It has a ton of legacy and loyalty behind it. Likely, it's probably gonna come back after they conclude their Skyactiv technology engines and solidify them as a power plant for about a decade or so so they don't have to keep doing R&D on the platform. From there, this will free up their engineering team to truly dive into some new research and development, provide a new engine to a potential Mazda name utilized what they've learned from Skyactiv, slap a big old turb ski on it, and let her run at about 360 horsepower. But what do you think? Should Mazda Speed come back? And if so, what do you think it would actually come with? If you have a Mazda of any kind and you're looking to, you know, pick up some wheel and tire packages, suspension, accessories, wheel only, tire only, be sure to hit us up over at FitmanIndustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.